Um, this Boogie B he got killed last night. Yeah, he a real nigga. Greg was my holy fan. I don't know, this nigga must have thought I was a woman for real, G. I was like, how this nigga thinking this? This nigga don't see these feet? What women he out here watching? Because I was doing knee down, nigga. I wasn't tripping. He, I'm looking at my knees. This nigga come in. Damn, I sure would like to see them titties. I'm like, this nigga is the truth. I started an OnlyFans, but a nigga named Greg. Yeah, you got to go. Uh, go to his uh, history like, hood shit. Come here, let me stretch y'all out like that. Because this New Orleans hood history owned the best chicken wings in New Orleans. Manchu Chicken. Manchu Chicken is a Vietnamese corner store in New Orleans. They've been serving chicken for over 30 years. The line might be long sometimes, but you're going to get your chicken quick. This is a Manchu Chicken plate. I order mine in 8s and 10s with a double rice just like this. Now, this rice ain't the best rice ever because I don't know why they put them the baby urn shrimp in there, but that chicken makes up for it. Ain't going to need no hot sauce or nothing. I guarantee you, if you bring this tray of chicken to whatever function you have, it's going Maybe I should say happy back to slavery day because history books. Come here, let me stretch y'all out right fast because this New Orleans hood is the real on the black Santa, aka the chocolate Santa, aka Seven Walls Santa, also known as Fred C. Park. New Orleans Santa was actually born in 1942 in a place called Lake Mississippi. And then he went to the military and became a sharpshooter in the army. And in 1964, he was honorably discharged and moved to New Orleans. He started off as an Orleans Parish school bus driver in the 60s. But in 1971, he decided to become the black Santa of the schools because prior to him, it was only white Santas to take pictures with in New Orleans. He got the nickname Seven Wall Santa because he was working out of a shop called Dennis Photo Finish on St. Bernard and Tonti in the Seventh Water. Some people say you ain't from New Orleans unless you got a picture with Black Santa. And here go me right here with him when I was in elementary school. Lord, I needed to shape up. Old Fred Parker passed away in 2020 after over 45 years of service in New Orleans. So rest in peace, Black Santa. Oh, you want to know where the middle class do all is at? Well, come and let me stress you out right fans with this hood history lesson on Gentilly. Now, Gentilly is a pretty big area. It's surrounded by water on three sides, and it touched the I-10 and the 610. They used to get a little breeze off that water, so they called it Chili Gentilly. And right at the bottom of Gentilly was a man-made beach, so they man-made the Gentilly neighborhood to be above sea level in New Orleans, if you could believe it. Gentilly was one of the best and whitest neighborhoods in New Orleans up until that old integration came. And Gentilly had a different style of houses built out there. They had California style with a little Spanish influence. And for those same reasons, the middle class blacks start moving into those neighborhoods. Today, Gentilly got three colleges and a Baptist seminary in it. Gentilly ain't what it once was, but it's still 56% safer than the rest of New Orleans. And it still got them nice houses. I think you muted out. Let's see the let's see the news story, man. Um, that's so All sad, right. man. That's that fucking guy. Watching that dude too. Yeah, that fucking guy, man. He seemed like he had a good good spirit, man. Good nice guy. Yeah, man. he was cool. Yeah, seemed like he was funny and had a good personality. Yeah, man. Just um, you know, lay easy, easy, easy going guy, man. You know, don't take himself too seriously. Mm. Yeah. Uh, man. To that homicide outside a grocery store on Smash. the search is on for the people really? responsible for killing yep. a man inside a downtown Rouse. Is now, I'm gonna pass on um, um yeah, American I'm Dad sure. right here, man. That's a very, like, American <laughs> Dad with a she got real strong ass chin. <laughs> yeah, she got that chin. Looks like she <laughs> might kick one of our ass. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pass on him or give good top guy, guy <laughs> smiley. <laughs> yeah, you, you're back, is he trying to smash guy smiley, man? I'm cool, man. I'm good on that, man. I'm just getting the, the top. homicide outside a grocery store on Barone Street. The search is on for the people responsible for killing a man outside a downtown Rouse's yesterday evening. That that innocent bystander now identified as local comedian Brandon Boogie B. Montrell. Brittany Dixon actually spoke with a close friend today about he how he wants Montrell to be remembered. Think about if you're somebody who was just watching the news, right? One of his followers. 
and you listen to this story all the way up to that point where she, you know, because the way they talked about it, they didn't necessarily come in with hot with it. They, they yeah. just, you know, and then they say him, you be like, what the fuck? Right. That's why. Like, what? Yeah, Brandon Boogie beating my throat dead, man. Like, what? It's, yeah, this, is, this community is shithole, man. Yeah, they took bro out. No reason. It's a shithole. That innocent bystander now identified as local comedian Brandon Boogie B. Montrell. Brittany Dixon actually spoke with a close friend today about he how he wants Montrell to be remembered. Brittany, what did he say? Yeah, I mean, if you just scroll through Montrell's Instagram, you can really tell how he was loved by everyone he met, whether that be people from the comedy scene in Los Angeles or his hometown friends right here in the Big Easy. It was one of those people that you always see come up in your life, but never does anything bad to anyone. Nobody has anything negative to say about him. Gets along with everybody. Never arrested, never affiliated with anything. Just an innocent bystander caught in the crossfire. 43-year-old comedian Brandon Boogie B. Montrell was sitting in his car in the Barone Street Rouse's parking lot when he was shot by a stray bullet. Brandon, family attorney. Sitting in his fucking car? Yeah. My God, man. It's caught my man lacking. This community. Well, was he... Was he targeted? Was it like was he just nah? He got he got caught in the crossfire. The, the super gremlins got the shooting at each other. They they seen they ops and then they just start blasting. Yeah, 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 I got you. I mean, he was in the car, but none of the other teams got shot or hit or nothing like that. Just nah, he was the only one who he died. Didn't say nothing, yeah. And look, he was probably making a video. Yeah, look about it. He probably was in there looking at some content or doing something. Maybe I don't know what he was doing. This is a grocery store you don't want to show up to. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, oh shit. Oh, God. Type shit. Wow. I mean. Shit's wild. These stories, it, like every day, I guarantee you, I bet you, before the show's over, we'll, we'll run into another one like this. These stories happen so many times every single day. In Blackistan. It's insane. The last story we did last night, little girl, 14-year-old girl driving her, her big brother did Uber Eats. She's just driving around with him while he's doing deliveries. She falls asleep in the back seat. You talking about the Memphis story? Yeah. Yeah. The niggas get to shooting up. and she gets hit and mm -hmm. killed in her sleep. 14 years old. Boogie B. Montrell was sitting in his car in the Barone Street Rouse's parking lot when he was shot by a stray bullet. Friend and family attorney Juan LaFonta says Montrell had just picked up Christmas Eve dinner for his grandmother. This is now what's happening to people with the crime getting out of control in the city. It's now people are being victimized. Montrell's mother released a statement Saturday morning saying, my son was not just the victim of a stray bullet. He's the victim of decades of neglect that have left New Orleans youth with no hope for a future and no real fear of consequences. You mute it. I like the second part of her statement. The first part is horse shit. Yeah. <laughs> These kids live in America. Tell that to some kids in Haiti. Now, if they were, if they lived in Haiti or fucking Rwanda or some shit, yeah, you can say they have no hope for a future. These kids live in a flagship city in America that got a program for the program for the program for the program. It got every fucking opportunity they can in the world is ahead of them. The only thing holding them back is other niggas. Hey. But that second part of her statement is real. No real consequences. No fear of real consequences. You know, it's a trip, though. They be talking about how motherfuckers can't get shit, but they can get them motherfucking pistols, though. Man. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. They can get pistols. They can get fucking four hundred dollar belts. One of these little motherfuckers got a belt that costs more than everything you got on. Right. What they say, Nate, man. They say the government dropped them off, man. That's how they get them. 
I was about to say, I thought <laughs> they drop them off on the corner or something like that. I used to sell guns, man. We steal them bitches. I missed it. I, I missed that with the gun drop off. I never heard nobody ever talk about that ever. I mean, like, you know, I, I've heard people talk about that. And, like, realistically, for the Midwest, you'd have to set up a you'd have to set up an operation somewhere on the railroad tracks in Ohio where they manufacture them bitches. Because once they, they, they leave, you ain't finding them. They yeah, that's can what let it me was. know when they drop them off next time. I, I need some. Uh, right. Well, well wicked, wicked, wicked. They said they was doing it in Chicago. Well, like in yeah, yeah. Chicago. That's where I heard about it first. It's famous they, for it. And, and I only heard one dude ever say it, it was that one video. I never heard anybody else with that yeah, one. Yeah. Video. <laughs> we all seen that same video. Yeah, that same video. I never heard another person. I, I never heard a rapper from Chicago ever mention that. I've never heard a documentary where anyone ever mentioned it. It was just that one guy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe it's yeah, true, it's, you know, because uh, Detroit and Chicago, they always been like that ever since. Well, it's something. Done, so who knows? Maybe it was more like it was more like they probably hit a lick on a train that had guns on it. Because remember when that those uh those Nike trucks crashed or whatever, yeah. or or the train or whatever, and then like they started looting them shits. I think it was probably just like th that same situation. Yo, yo, I, I had I had a woke friend try to. You know, zing me saying, uh, look, the army, because there was an article, the army's bringing guns. And I told them, yeah, look who did it. It was brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, man, if you got, if, if, if having a gun means that you're going to kill somebody, like, that like you can't control yourself. The only way to stop you from killing is the where you can't have the gun. I think that says more. I think pasty liberals got to realize that when you talk about black people like that, pasty liberals, you're saying that if they if they get a gun, they're gonna kill each other. They don't have any impulse control, nothing. Right. right. It, it's like it's it's weird, man, that they talk about us like that without any pushback. It's, right. You it's not like the <laughs> jumping out. You know, they're gonna react to they're gonna react, I think. The community's forgotten about kids. Now the NOPD is looking for three people. These two men named suspects in the case. Wow. And this woman. Blondie, wow, wow, just some, yeah, just some random fucking got primates, some goddamn, um, fucking pro bottom humans. feeders, random proto humans just saw each other and started clapping at each other, and, and, and then he gets hit sitting in his fucking car. Yo, I right, could you ask me this, this, uh. Security footage is racist. This be on the lookout. <laughs> fucking racist. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, this is this is crazy. It's always them too. Like, here's the thing: when we get to Minnesota, the Minnesota Ball of America shooting, like it's always them. At any time there's a shooting, it's always us, except for like seven times a year in public. Except like seven died. Those are all the ones that are on CNN and right. MSNBC. Well, to be fair, it's us and we in the mix too, Chief, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, y'all in the mix too, but I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's figuratively, it's always us. I mean, it's virtually, always, virtually, it's yeah. yeah. Damonique Smith as a person of interest. They're also looking for this car they believe the suspects left the scene in. On behalf of the Montreal family, LaFonta says keep pushing his brand, keep pushing his label. And if you recognize any of the people involved, you can call Crime Stoppers. Brittany Dixon reporting for us tonight. Thanks, Brittany. Damn, man. Um, Black Gen Z, man. You 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 got you gotta come back from this one, man. We got <laughs> Yeah, you gotta redeem yourself with this one, man. I don't know <laughs> you gotta redeem yourself with um goddamn old, old goddamn Ted Cobble here and shit, man. <laughs> I don't know. I like her job. Steve to you, and thanks for watching the Eyewitness News at six. Uh, Mike McDaniel. Today she had a sturdy chin. And yesterday's deadly shooting at the Rouse's grocery <laughs> store in the warehouse district. Family members say he is popular comedian Brandon Boogie B. Montreal. Police also released this photo of two suspects in the shooting. Investigators want to know who they are. 
and police say these two should be considered armed and dangerous. Police are also looking for this woman. They say her name is Dominique Smith. Investigate Di Monique. Yeah, what you supposed to wear, Di Monique? <laughs> they say she is not a suspect, but is a person of interest in the case. They believe she may have information. Now, police say Boogie B was found shot to death in a vehicle in the Rouse's. Looks like Monique dyed Rouse's her hair yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Line from the Rouse's on her <laughs> own, with reaction from some people who knew Boogie B. Hey there, Sam. Well, Mike, friends have told us that Boogie B was more than just a comedian. He was a New Orleanian who had a positive impact on his city and his community. Now, Brandon Boogie B Montrell was known for his hood history videos, where he took his own unique views and talked about the lesser known parts of history of New Orleans. And we're told that Montrell was back in town visiting his family for Christmas. And he was parked at the Rouse's on Barone Street when he was. Shit, this story gets sadder and sadder. So he yeah. lived in L.A. doing his comedy thing and he was just back in there getting his mama some food isn't that how everybody gets it though <laughs> yeah, this shit is sad. yeah. <laughs> make you all fucking cry man this shit is fucking sad man don't go back to your hood yeah fuck your hood never go back well, and well, move listen, your mama out he lives in la this could have happened in la yeah for sure there's nowhere to fucking hide <laughs> in the country <laughs> Now, attorney Juan Lafonta is a longtime friend of Montrell's and said that his death is a huge loss for the community. And he, he really said he wanted to shed light on more people from the community that were doing more positive things than negative things. He was always, always a really, really positive guy, very, very unassuming. Uh, every person you could talk to, he never made one enemy. <clears throat> And coming up tonight at 10, we'll take a deeper look at uh, Boogie B's career, as well as hearing in his own words about how he'd like to be remembered after his death. Reporting from the Warehouse District, Sam Winstrom, I would. Jesus Christ, man. Whether on purpose or by design, the worst of us take out the best of us. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's really, really right. fucking sad, man. It, it is fucking, that shit is terrible.